Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with yet my yeah eighth episode of the Halloween Horror Movie Review Series, and this review will be for the movie Saw. Finally, a movie I've been long waiting to talk about in this horror movie review series. As for those of you who don't know, yes, I actually really love the first Saw film. It's one of my favorite horror movies of the 2000s. The sequels are pretty decent, but Saw 1 I like the most. It's got such a phenomenal twist ending, a phenomenal premise, a very fresh concept. On sub, something a lot of horror movies can barely pull off. And I absolutely adore it for that. And what's this movie about? Well, well, two guys awakened to find themselves locked in a filthy, destroyed public bathroom. As they regain awareness, things go from bad to worse. There's a dead body on the floor between them. They realize that they're chained to large pipes on opposite sides of the room. And they discover a hidden message for each. They learn that there's a madman playing a sick game with them. Now they must win the game and escape with their lives. Because if they stay, they will both die. So, basically, this is just, it well pulls off everything right. And it basically started with two f filmmakers who graduated from film school decided to make a film. The f and they want a low budget film. Their idea for a low budget based film came from watching this profitable found footage film, The Blair Witch Project. So, they came up with a new low budget concept, which was this, and it became none other than Saw. And it actually, it actually has quite a few similarities to that David Fincher movie 7, except it's not the same thing as 7, it's, it's just... It's actually much more somewhat of a different premise. It actually just focuses on two prisoners. So there's the two leads do give some pretty good performances. There's a running this whole load of emotions include thankfully helplessness, hopefulness, some anger, and some desperation. Desperation. We actually get to know how they got into the room. Which is actually good. We see through flashbacks. We see a plot involving involving a few cops through flashbacks, trying to hunt down the jigsaw killer. Killer, and of course, we see also see the flashbacks of how they were captured and put in the room, room in the first place, and why they're all in this game. Now, a lot of people say it's really gory, but it's actually not as gory as people make it out to be. I mean, the sequels are much more gorier, but this is actually pretty tame for the violence level. Now, of course, there are a few nitpicks it has, like maybe some of the acting can be a little gnarmy at times, but this is a low budget film. I don't think the acting was really supposed to be good, in my opinion, but I think they were just... Trying to just simply make a low budget horror film that wowed audiences away, and it really worked. It this like became this most profitable horror film since Scream at the time. And well, we all know it got its several sequels. Now, what are probably some of the scariest factors of this film? Well, the guys in the pig masks that abduct them. Or and the uh, the scene where the doctor saws off his foot is pretty to, pretty disturbing and pretty and pretty grotesque at times. Oh, and then of course definitely comes one of my favorite twists. Spoilers, guys. I'm gonna get to spoilers when that dead body rose off the floor and revealed himself. It really totally scared the hell out of me the first time I saw it. Like I was just speechless. I just had my hands over my mouth. It. I did not see it coming. Yeah, and there are, and the characters are also pretty good, like, um, the photographer, one of the, the first guy who wakes up in the bathroom, and then this, the other guy is this doctor with a wife and a daughter, who gets, basically, 
put in the room because, well, because technically he's cheating on them. And of course there are a few cop characters, like there's this detective that Danny Glover plays, and he's not in the film much, but he's actually, he actually does give a pretty good performance as the detective who's trying to capture Jigsaw. Yeah, pretty much. I think everyone is, I think everyone is pretty good in this film, I mean, James Wan has actually proven to direct, gone on to grow as a director. This rate, and maybe it didn't start off well after Saw first. I mean, he directed some films like Dead Silence and Death Sense, but they didn't really make much of an impact as this movie. As this movie. Then he would go on to direct Insidious. And it actually, it proved to be like decent. I mean, it was better than some of his other pre, pre first two pre-Saw films. But then he directed, finally directed another horror masterpiece, and that was The Conjuring. Definitely another pretty, Definitely another pretty good horror flick that you recommend checking out. If you love not gory horror films, and he also directed No Home, the first sequel to Insidious the same year came out. Then of course he would go on to direct of course a few big budget action films like Fury 7 and of course recently Aquaman. And he at least did direct The Contrary 2 and that's actually a really good sequel. Most horror sequels are never good but Contrary 2 is a very epic sequel. I would definitely check it out. If you love the first one. Now, as for the Saw sequels, which, how would I enjoy them from best to worst? Well, of course I enjoy Saw 2, Saw 3, Jigsaw, Saw 6, Saw 4, Saw 5, and bottom worst would of course be Saw 3D, the final chapter. That's the sequel I hate the most. But now, this pretty much wraps up my review for Saw. So, how would I rank Saw? I am going to give Saw a flat out 10 out of 10. Well, guys, that'll be it for this review. And uh, my next review will be for um, this um, cheesy slasher film from 2007 named uh, Hatchet. But until then, that'll be it for this review, guys. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this and want some more, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Lover 120.